Now we'll look at Not Dice from Black Oak Gaming. Thanks to Black Oak for sending us a review copy of these rather cool <laughs> dice. Not Dice was designed and published by Matthew O'Malley under his company Black Oak Games. Uh, these dice were kickstarted in 2015, but didn't hit the market until 2016. A single set of Not Dice includes a number of games and puzzles for one to four players, with the game time varying greatly by game. Now, all of the games are pretty much quick filler style games, and most, if not all, can be played in well under half an hour. The highlight of this game is, of course, the 18 Celtic Knot pattern dice, which you can see for yourself on our Knot Dice unboxing video on YouTube. So as you'll see in the video, these are nice, thick, chunky dice. Like, they're larger than your average six-sided die. You're looking at 20 millimeter square, which is about um, half an inch square. This makes the pattern on the dice easy to see and also makes the dice nice and easy to manipulate and stack. Now, every die in the set, all 18, are identical with six different knotwork patterns on them that can be combined to make larger knotwork shapes. The dice are colored to look like Connemara marble, and the patterns are actually etched into the dice and inked with silver. Now, in addition to the dice, a box in that dice also contains eight wooden two-sided tokens in four colors and two books. One's a book of games that can be played with the dice, and the other is a number of puzzles that can be played with the dice. And I have to say, these books were bigger than what I expected upon seeing the game. Um, so what kind of games can you play with Not Dice, and, and where should someone start? Well, for someone new to Not Dice, I suggest grabbing the puzzles book first on your own before you got your group together to play. This book has seven different puzzle types that include creation puzzles, which give you a set of dice all set to a specific side. And then you have to take those dice and make a pattern, a complete pattern out of them. This one is great for learning how the dice fit together. And this is where I recommend you start off because it'll give you a good idea of the different sides of the dice and how they interact with each other. Then I would move on to completion puzzles. This is where you set up the dice in a pattern specified in the book and then manipulate that pattern following a set of rules. Uh, for example, being able to swap the dice in the corners or translate an entire row of dice from one side of the pattern to another. And those are the only two moves you can move, make. Later completion puzzles will add the ability to rotate some dice. You're going to score yourself based on how many moves you take to make the completion pattern and then try again and see if you can get a better score or compare it to letting someone else try at some point. Next are transformation puzzles. These have you set up the dice in a completed knot work pattern and then transform that to a different knot work pattern. Now these follow most of the same rules as the completion puzzles, but it allows you to flip dice to other sides, but only on the edges. Again, you're gonna score based on how many moves you make. Building puzzles have you try to complete a three dimensional object with a single pattern on each side. So you have a cube where you're trying to get a single pattern on each of the visible sides, or there's one that's a rectangle, or you're trying to get one complete knot work pattern covering the entire stack. These so far to us were the hardest of the puzzles we tried. Now there are two more puzzle types that I will leave for people to pick, who pick up, leave for people who pick up these dice to check out on their own. All right, well, now are these all solo puzzles or can they be played with or even against others? Uh, they are designed to be solo, but what I found is many of them don't use all the dice. So like Deanna and I would both try at once to do the same puzzle. So uh, there were there's a whole bunch of three by three puzzles and there's 18 dice, right? So three by three puzzles are nine dice. So D would take nine dice and I would take nine dice and we both set the same pattern and see who could solve it first. But generally, they're made to be played solo, but there is a scoring system for all of them. So one of the things you can do is then you can have anyone play anywhere in the world and go online and say, hey, I played Completion Puzzle 6. A, what, how, how many moves did it take you? And try to beat someone else's high score. So each set of not dice also contains a game book. Uh, this game book has 12 different games. Now, each game here is quite different from the next. There are a couple that build on each other, but there's, there's a wide variety here. These all have variable player counts, many being able to be played solo as well. Now, the max player count for any of the games with a single box of not dice is four. 
but the rules include games that will go up to higher counts if you have more than one set of these dice. And for people who kickstarted it, you could have ordered extra dice and there were deluxe sets that had more dice. But for the average person shopping for retail, you're going to have to pick up two sets. Is the deluxe uh, box not available for sale? Not that I know of, but it might be on their website. I would have to go look. Because I know the deluxe set, the deluxe is, is 36 dice, not 18. Yeah, so it's it's two sets worth. So that might be available on their site. I would have to go. It's, it's okay. blackoakgames.com, I think. Well, no matter what, we will drop a link in the show notes. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but here are some of those games and a brief overview of them without getting into details. Uh, the first game of the book, first one we played is Kells, uh, based obviously on the Book of Kells, the, the, the famous manuscript with all the not work artwork. This is a cooperative game where players are working together to make a single pattern. You start off with two dice on your turn. You're going to grab another die. You roll them, and then you're going to have to add one of those dice to the central pattern. If you can't add a die, it's removed from the game. If you remove too many dice from the game, you lose. If you do manage to complete the pattern, you're going to get points awarded for the number of dice used and the size of the finished pattern. Kells the Book is a longer version of Kells, which actually we found a little more enjoyable, where you're going to try to make multiple patterns. At the end of each round, any dice you didn't use in the current pattern are lost, and then you start a new round with the dice you have left. And you just keep doing that with smaller and smaller pools of dice, scoring each one individually, and then adding up all your scores at the end. Not So Fast is a competitive real-time game where players are rolling their own set of dice, trying to be the first to complete a pattern using all of them. You start off with only four dice, and when you complete a pattern, the game stops, and the player who completed the pattern then draws another die. So now they have one more die to complete their pattern with, and you keep rolling, and when you complete another one, you take another die, and you keep doing that until all the last die is taken. Then the winner of the game is the player with the most dice. A Celtic Yarn starts with a random three by three grid of dice made up of only ends and chains. Players each take and roll a separate die, one that's not part of that grid. And then on their turn, they're gonna add a die to the pattern by sliding it in from one edge and then taking the die that comes out the other end as their uh, die to play next. The goal here is to be the first player who can make a path going from one side of the grid, passing over four dice and coming out another side. Snakes is a push your luck game where players start off with a string of chains and an end cap. Each turn, you're going to roll five dice and add any chains or curves to your growing snake. Any other dice are useless. Each roll, players have to add at least one die to their snake. And if they can't, their snake has been bitten and you lose any dice added to the snake that round. Instead, if a player passes before busting and rolling all, all bad dice, they get to move their token on top of the snake to the new head and then their snake has moved along, and they're going to replace their spent dice from the back of the snake, from the tail. After playing six rounds, whoever's gotten their snake the furthest is going to win. And that is less than half of what yes. you get in the game's manual. Then, one I do want to highlight, uh, getting it, I think, up to half here, is there is an RPG story style game, an improv story game included, which was fascinating. I'll admit, we didn't try this one. Uh, this is called Not the Whole Story. This is an improvisational story game for up to four players. The game starts with an end cap placed on the tail, uh, on the table. Sorry, Players then split the dice evenly and roll them. Players decide on a genre, setting, and basic premise and a character or two they want in their story. Then each round, players are going to add one die to the growing pattern and tell part of the story based on what side of the die they use. If you use an end cap, you're bringing that part of the story to a close. If you're using a chain, you just continue the story in a logical way from where it's gone before. Corners, though, of course, introduce a twist where you have to put a change, and branches are going to introduce a fork in the story. The group as the whole wins if they manage to finish off with an end cap and bring the story to a logical conclusion. Though, really, in this type of game, everyone just wins by having a group experience. I have to say that is a unexpected but cool addition. Yeah. Certainly not something you'd expect in a box of dice. Yeah, I totally agree. I, this one kind of like, oh, that's interesting. They threw it in here. And it's worth noting that the games were not all designed by the designer. There were multiple designers that were involved in the various different games. And this one obviously is not from the designer, but from someone else. And I apologize for not having the name offhand. So overall, when looking at, at Not Dice overall, um, one of the things I think is important to, to 
for not dice is the dice, right? Like that, that is a, one of the biggest features are just the dice. Um, these dice are fantastic. They're big, chunky. They're a joy to hold. They're easy to manipulate. They've got a nice heft to them. They look fantastic. And I, I love the fact that when they launched this on Kickstarter, they sold it as an art object. And some people are considering them. They're like, this is a knickknack. This is a, these are a work of art. And I think that that's well-deserved. Um, it was my wife that pointed out that the color and style they're going for was that Con Connemara marble. And I'm like, oh yeah, it totally is. Once I saw that. And I, I think they nailed that look. And I love the fact they're etched. So you don't have to worry about the pattern being knocked off or worn off. And I honestly think that this set of dice alone is worth the price just for the dice as a standalone thing to own as a, as a knickknack. I think just having these on your desk to fiddle with and, and for people to admire or to have on an end table or a coffee table in an entertainment area, or if you, you own an office, having them out in the waiting area, I just think would be a great use of these dice. Yeah, I can absolutely see these uh, marketed as one of those executive desk puzzles that used to be used to see at all the, the sort of business stores and the fancy, uh, you know, higher yeah. men's stores. Uh, I could totally see myself using these and playing with them while I'm stuck on a conference call. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And for, for, for uh, anyone who like, like, like fiddle stuff, this would be great. Yep. I can't think of the fidget yep, Fid fidget. As, as a fidget tool. I think these would be great. But this isn't just a pretty set of dice. So there's a game and some puzzles. So starting off the puzzles, I was impressed mostly by the variety. Like some of them are dead simple. You're going to breeze through them. Like the creation puzzles, like it was one of those that Deanna and I were both working through them. She had the dice. It was like, do I really need to finish this? Like you can tell. Like the first one is you have a cross and four end caps. You're like, oh, I don't know where these are going to go. Like, like they're, they're a little bit simple. But you know what? They were great for getting to know the dice. And I do recommend starting off with those creation puzzles just to get used to how the dice fit together and which patterns go with each other and, and how they connect. So I, I do recommend it. And then on the other end, some of the puzzles are hard. Like, like, I don't know, the creation puzzles in particular seem to like use a part of the brain that both Deanna and I need to exercise more. And I think it's the same part for people who can solve Rubik's cubes. I have a feeling if you can solve a Rubik's cube, you're probably going to be really good at that swapping the edges and translating things. Cause Ooh, we, we had a hard time, but overall, I think this is a great variety of puzzles to keep someone occupied. Like this is a great for solo. You're stuck at home, something to play around with. And I think there's enough variety here to keep it interesting. Absolutely. I love that you've got the, uh, the learning curve there in the puzzles because you don't want to dump people in, in the deep end. And some people are more puzzle, you know, yep. oriented than others. And again, that, you know, just learning the dice and, 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 figuring out all the little things that are on them, uh, mm -hmm. especially for someone who may, may not be used to not work patterns, is, uh, is just a great tool. Now, while the puzzles are an interesting distraction, the real fun to be had, in my opinion, with Not Dice is the games. Uh, we've now tried most of them, and every single one of them is fun and engaging in some way. Some are easier and quicker than others, but there weren't any that weren't fun. Like, it was just, oh, this is a dumb game, or this is just boring. All of them were at least interesting for a few plays on, on for each of them. Now, despite being dice games, what did impress me about these games is they weren't overly random. Like, yes, yeah, Snake, the, the, the push your luck game, yes, that's highly random. You're rolling dice hoping to get the right symbols, and the person who rolls the right symbols is going to beat the person who doesn't in general. And if you're losing, you're going to push your luck. And if you're not losing, if you're in the lead, you're probably not, right? That's how push your luck games go. But most of the other games were much more about thinking ahead and predicting what your opponents were going to do. Um, in particular, a Celtic yarn, the one I was talking about where you push in dice from the edges trying to make a pattern, had that very chess-like abstract, uh, the Duke, Onitama, that same kind of brain space I find for a two-player game. And overall, I was really impressed by the variety, uh, the number of different ways that the designer and the people who helped them could come up with to use this set of dice. Like it's, it's one pattern of, that are the same on all 18 dice. And I was even more impressed by how much of a change it was using the dice different ways, especially you get to your first wall pattern. I think it's called Kells the Chapel. And instead of doing manuscripts of the book, you're supposedly painting the wall. The change in mental process from worrying about the top of the die to the four sides 
like was surprising like just that wow that felt different even though really i'm still just making clockwork patterns right yeah the effort and thought that went into this rather you know on the surface simple product Mm. both physically and with the puzzles and games is really top notch Uh, and i think it's something that people could easily miss on a shelf this is just a small box of pretty dice and it's really a tough sell because it's impossible to grasp just how much game you get from this little box of dice yeah i agree there's there's nothing on the front of the box especially to say this is a box full of 12 different games for various player counts and seven puzzle types i don't know how many individual puzzles there are because each type had multiple ones i didn't sit and count them up but like i'm gonna say 20 no probably 30 or 50 different puzzles in there to play through i it just it, you're right it doesn't sell itself it looks like oh some custom dice and people are also this is the other thing that i guess i hadn't noted yet there is no way to translate this pattern into a one through six like you're not you, you couldn't use these as standard dice like i guess you could write up your own little uh cipher between them <laughs> but it's not like if you count the curves or anything if there's three curves two curves four curves it's not like these, these dice are specifically designed to make not work patterns and not be used as normal dice overall i, I think it shows in the review already I, i'm impressed by this like i i am more impressed than i thought i remember when this was on kickstarter and i remember thinking that's neat but it's just a bunch of not work dice and It's much more than that. They are great looking dice. I expected great looking dice. These are, as I said, an art object. They they could be a desktop tool or a desktop toy. Like these are really cool. What I wasn't expecting is the sheer number of different ways to play with these dice. There are some really solid engaging games here and some great activities for doing solo that makes this set so much more than just pretty dice. And they are pretty dice. Well, for more info on not dice, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews.